We going in, we going in. Yes, sir. Episode 348, episode 348. Welcome to the Phase on View podcast, man. To the Phase on View podcast, man. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe out there. Like, share, subscribe. We going live. We doing some new things out here, man. We doing it big out here. All right? So, man, justice for Pac. Man, ironically, I got my Pac gear on. I want to get into these conversations. All right, what's been floating around about Keith E.D. All right, 27 years away to... Come on now. Like, with it, with my opinion on this Pac situation, I just feel like I just wish he still he was still alive. Like, we still talk about Pac, like, every... Honestly, within every debate, within every conversation, I just really wish he was alive, even though it's really no... You not we really not gonna know. And on the to Keefy D, he only been snitching and telling on himself for the last five, ten, fifteen years. I've been talking about it on Vlad. It's been many alter, uh, many situations where we have seen uh, different TV shows, spinoffs, a bunch of a bunch of nonsense for real, for real. Because at the end of the day, we uh, a lot of people still speculating if he's alive. You know what I'm saying? So this whole situation is crazy. Then you got Suge sp- speaking out on on it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I feel like we already had knowledge of what happened with, with the Pac situation as far as what has gone on. It's so it's been so much information within these last twenty seven years and it's like it's just being arrest being made. So I don't I don't just say this is just straight up justice because justice could have been served twenty seven years ago. You know what I'm saying? That that goes to show you that it was a lot of inner workings, um, not just the person who was so-called and allegedly murdered Pac, but just in regards to people just hating on him. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you're on top of the world, like how him and Biggie were, like, you just had a whole bunch of hating. And then you had a whole bunch of, you know, the East Coast, West Coast nonsense going on, for real, for real. Because if you really think about it, that messed up That messed up music, bro. That messed up everything. Like, they cultivated, Tupac and Biggie cultivated really hip-hop in a certain time point. You know what I'm saying? Like, from the 70s, 70s, it just hip-hop really was just getting started to the 80s. You know what I'm saying? You had NWA. Then you had, uh, of course, New York being a stamp with everybody that they had. Uh, KRS-One, Rakim, just, you know, et cetera. So many. But when you got to the 90s, that era of the 90s, and Tupac and Biggie, what they did from hip-hop, we all, we're we always going to be talking about them. Like, that, those are really iconic type of people because we still talking about them years later. And it's like they were only 24, 25, 26 in, within their de- demise. So it's like it's it's really wild what happened with Tupac and Biggie because we still are talking about it to this day. And it's like something that could have been avoided. That's that's where it really come down to. I feel like I feel like um in regards to Tupac, the only thing that makes me kind of upset about the whole situation that he was like too loyal. I I I don't know if it's a thing such called too loyal, but in this in this situation, what a lot of people saw and a lot of people feel like, and what I feel like, it was just loyal to somebody that wasn't loyal back to you for real. For real. it was it was industry games, because with with the situation uh, with Orlando Anderson um, at the uh, 1996 Vegas fight with Tyson, like how everything went down, it was just like. Ah, like, you know what I'm saying? This could have been avoided. You know, it was a situation between gangs, you know, Bloods and Crips, that he shouldn't have been a part of. And no, and honestly, this being the superstar he was, he shouldn't have, have, they shouldn't have let him around that. Even though Park personality, you know, was what it was, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I would, I would have kept my superstar out of harm's way. But he was loyal, you know what I'm saying? But... For it to be 27 years and we just figuring out and finding out what's going on is that's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. And like, like we just said, like I said earlier, like with the and I feel like a lot of people in the industry, hip hop, and et cetera, a lot of times being hypocrites and contradicting. Let let's call a spade a spade because everybody been going up to Vlad TV. And a lot of people been accusing and alleging him to be this alleged fed. You know what I'm saying? Asking certain questions, how he set up certain questions. But it's an outpouring of love from from our industry and our community to go up on there and show him uh, and and really increase his platform. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, when we're doing, it's telling on ourselves in a lot of times. What I mean, what 
why why let them why let him be the judge of you know what i'm saying of anything you know what i'm saying i know i remember it was one artist that went up there and was just like i don't know nothing you know what i'm saying like just you know just answering the questions very carefully because it's just like first of all you being up there you ain't gonna get no good out of it because a lot of the information that they got <laughs> to even send so uh since keefe d was from the vlad videos everything that happened uh, as far as like the situation he spoke about on vlad and he's been speaking about it so it's just like i just always looked at the tupac situation like eerie because it's like first of all this legend icon didn't deserve to go out like that first of all then second of all you have so so many stories so many uh conspiracy theories going on just about his death and now 27 years later y'all trying to find some resolve for it it's like at the end of the day i'm still upset he's gone you know what i'm saying and and that whole situation happened because that was when like the mecca of hip hop, that was that that was where it was at its tier, because after Park uh, Park and Biggie, you have uh, amazing acts after that, but they were all influenced by these two amazing icons for real, for real. So like hearing about it, hearing about it, it's like it is justice for Park, you know, justice for his family, especially, um, and condolences to them. But it's just like, is it really, like, is it really justice because like this is and, and, because honestly. Even though they say he he did it, they might not. That's not my, you know what I'm saying? There, it was it was uh, claims that Orlando Anderson did it. His nephew, you know, it was another person in the car. He was in the car, you know what I'm saying? And what makes it really eerie is that Pac and Biggie kind of died in similar ways. So that in itself just looked crazy, crazy in itself. Like they died in similar ways, um, almost the same age, 24, 25, of the mecca of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? And what's really telling, to be honest with you, to what's really telling about their situation is that in hindsight, they kind of had it, they kind of had it out or beef with their, you know, with their label, with, with, with what was going on. You feel me? Both They didn't both like their situations. And I feel like that's what really made them become friends, too, as, as well, because they were amazing artists. But I'm not saying they were being held back by by the, the labels or the industry, but in a sense, you feel me? Like in hindsight, it, that's that's how it kind of looked. And you know, it's a lot of speculations going on right now about other people being involved in it. You know what I'm saying? And I, I feel like even though he's arrested, it's still still going to be conversations and talks that we're going to have amongst ourselves and just in general. Like, so, like for real, like prayers and condolences, all right, for Tupac's family. So, like, for real, for real, to give them some ease as well too. But. In my opinion, it's just like, it's justice, but in a sense, it's like, man, this 26, 27 years later, you feel me? And then it was so much information out there before, like, why is this just now happening? You feel me? So, I don't like that. I don't like that. But, on to, on to something positive, all right? On to uh, something more positive, all right? New music, new music drop. All right, we had the Yachty featuring J. Cole track. We had the Wayne mixtape. All right, we had the Meek Mill, Raw, Shaq, and Kobe. It's a, it's a lot of good music coming out right now. This is the fourth quarter of music. And then you got For, for All the Dogs coming out this Friday. Yes, this is, it's time. It's really time for that for that music bag to get in here. All right, but that Yachty and Cole, man, that Yachty and Cole. I, I feel like, man, say what you want. Yachty don't get his respect as, a, as an artist, too. He is a creative genius as well, too. Like, for real, for real, writing pen-wise and, and rapping-wise, he's underrated. But come on now, we know we know what's about to happen. Cole's God tier, Cole's God tier, man. He one, he's one of them. He's one of them. And I, I always respect and love Cole as 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 an artist and a rapper and as a rapper because he speaks true and he's he's authentic. That's what I really like about Cole. He's really authentic and like his bars, it really means something. Like the content, the words, the word play. You know what I'm saying? The and even even what I'm liking about Cole even more now is the jabs that he's willing to take right now because I I, I used to hate this because I always been a, a Cole fan from day one but I used to hate when people used to say like Cole really don't show that aggressive that like you know what I'm saying that edge to him even though he's one of them he don't really don't show that edge to him and and like people felt like his music wasn't that appealing like which is false to me I feel I feel like J Cole's music can stand the test of time with anybody. 
with anybody, especially within his catalog. When a lot of people were saying things about Cole in in a negative way, I'm talking about when he, you know, he was dropping, uh, like for your for your eyes only, like for like for those type of albums. Um, people wasn't really feeling it, but it had a very much so conscious, real content behind it. And Cole always been about the real, real content. Actually, what he's spitting, you know what I'm saying, is actually real game, real knowledge. You feel me like this? Trials and tribulations. He's not just talking about something that he doesn't do. He's not talking no shoot him up, kill him, no, no fly guy talk. He's talking about really just authentically who he is as a person. You feel me? And giving game while he's doing it. So, like, this is just another master class. Cole went crazy, but I feel like I feel like his, I feel like everything with, within this generation a lot of people just look for the negative you feel me they they just look for the negative because he bar he barred it up and you know we always we going to have the conversation about it being directed to young boy and that's what i do like about cole now he said you know what i'm saying he's stepping out there but also it we we get it we get in the realm of just talking about negativity so much and then honestly that's what this generation feeds off of you feel me like and i understand that rap and hip-hop changes but I feel like that's why where hip hop is missing now a real message behind the music, you know what I'm saying? Actually spitting and the people that actually rap, like even with even if you don't have the best content, you feel me? Like flows, melodies, it's, it, it all matters. I feel like we just losing we losing a lot of sight of that, you know what I'm saying? And and I'm not saying that drill rap is because drill rap has been successful, but in regards to drill rap and like I guess you could say mumble rap, it kind of you know what I'm saying? Is it kind of messed up the this you know, even though hip hop evolves, it kind of messed up the authentic, real rap. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. It, it just messed up the real rap. And like another, another song, real rap, Meek Mill and Ross. That that Shaq and Kobe record was fire. That Shaq and Kobe record is fire. That's like the MG. My goodness, MMG. We really want. You feel me? Like back to the eye. Right, let's get to the nitty gritty. You know, they rap, rapping like this. It's their last meal, for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, they can't, they, they, they searching and starving right now. You know what I'm saying? They top, to, you know, top tier. Come on, they already superseded all our expectations. But, nah, it's time, it's time to get some real music back, for real, for real. I feel like these two, these two can't miss. They got a collab album coming out, too. But that Shaq and Kobe, like, that was some real authentic bars. It felt like a real Meek Mill and Ross track. You know what I'm saying? You can't lose in that situation. M MMG, like, these kids don't know. MMG, the back, come on now. Like, think about Meek Mill, Rick Ross, and the Wale era was crazy. Was crazy era right there. You feel me? Like, and I feel like those two artists, especially Ross and Meek Mill, they don't get the credit they uh, deserve for sure. And then also, real quick to talk about Wale, like, let's put some respect on Wale name because a lot of people were, uh, were, were talking about and debating, like, in regards to, like, Wale, you know, his talent, why he didn't get the look as, like, some some of these other superstars when he's immensely talented. But he was just talking about his personality. But we have a lot of artists and you have a lot of different rappers that that have a certain persona that, you know what I'm saying, that we might not like either, but we give them the credit. They deserve because I do feel like Wale is is especially catalog wise is in that superstar caliber conversation. There's no way, you feel me? Like we look at the, we look at his personality and and people get turned off by his personality. But you have a lot of artists and rappers that we that we champion that we like and we don't really you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and let's let's keep it a bean. Like we pro probably don't agree with what they do in their personal lives, but we respect their craft. I feel like Wale is in that superstar conversation. Like that MMG era though. You just had to be there. Like, Dream Chases when it was coming out. Like, Forlorn. You know what I'm saying? When the Lotus Flower Bomb. Like, come on now. Like, then you get into Raw's catalog. That's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother conversation. Like, you get into the, the, the come on now, Mastermind. I, I You can go far, far, further back. Teflon Don. Like, come on. But that was amazing to hear them. I'm looking forward to that collab. Wayne Mixtape, The Goat. I don't care what nobody say. You already know. You know what I'm saying? If you know me, that's that's the go right there. You know what I'm saying? He came out with a, a, a mixtape, The Fix, The Fix Before The Six. And I feel like I always say this, man. Be grateful that we have rappers like this still alive and still doing it. Because you know I feel like Wayne is the GOAT. But also, it's just in, in the regards of the consistency. Like, this is 25 years in. Straight bars. Killing everybody on features. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, nothing has really changed. I know a lot of people get upset and, and waiting for, like, you know what I'm saying, in regards to, like, certain bars and, like, and, and you know, certain songs that he gets on. But also, when you really think about it, this man is immensely talented. Like, we, we actually, like, I mean, uh, people prefer, like, I prefer his straight rapping bag. But I still love songs like I'm Single or, like, She Will or No Worries. Or, you know what I'm saying, I can go on and on and on. So it's just like, I, I know how people view or rebirth. I was young singing, uh, you know, the prom queen, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, how to love mirror, six foot, seven foot. His, like, melodic, different type of songs are still revered and still mega hit songs. So I know when people say, like, oh, yeah, well, that's not what we're looking for, Wayne. I understand that, too, because sometimes I want real bars, real rap from Wayne. But also, guess what? This man has done it in all different type of lanes, too. So, like, I respect the craft and respect just trying to be different and not give the consumer just because you have, when you got to think about it, when you're, when you're feeding an audience and certain consumers, you want to you wanna go to different audiences, too. That's how you grow as a brand. You feel me? You want to be diverse. That's why Drake is so great because he could talk about rap, rap, real rap stuff. Then he could talk about an R&B bag. Then he can get into pop. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get into the R&B bag and rap bag, you go into Wu-Tang Forever. You go to Fire and Desire. Then I go to all the way to, to a whole nother left. Like, come on now. Like, let Tussy slide. You feel me? Like, so appealing to different audiences as well, too. Like, so I feel like with this mixtape, he did that, but Dude, like y'all said, for the real rap Wayne fans, like when he really in his bag, just no auto tune, just straight in. That slip, that slip record is crazy. Like, come on, I'm crazy. Carter Six is gonna be crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't care if y'all saying bias or whatever. I've been a Wayne fan since day one, since ninety nine, two thousand. Feel me? Like, so I'm I'm looking forward to you know Carter Six. And like I said, it's fourth quarter of music. I, I listen to all type of music. Like, I'm an R&B head as well, too. Like, Cleo Soul just had a real good uh, album just come out. I'm, I'm in tune. I'm in tune for sure. I'm in tune for sure. And another conversation that we really need to talk about is, like, as far as, like, a versus, it, it's just dawned on me. But, like, people don't talk about Ty Dolla Sign enough. He's very immensely talented. Like, that's one of the artists, like, sign language in college, bro. People don't understand. I, and somebody brought up this conversation. Cause we all, like, back then, we always used to compare Party Next Door and The Weeknd. But I'm going to tell you right now, Ty Dolla Sign and Party Next Door, that, that would be a little good versus right there. I don't know who went. I'm just, you know, just speaking hypothetical right now. But, like, that's that's a conversation to be had because Ty Dolla Sign, he really don't get his just credit because I just seen a Kanye clip when he just with Ty Dolla Sign, they cooking up a beat, cooking up a song like Ty Dolla Sign for real for it. and Jaded was one of my favorite songs. Of course, it's Drake, but talking about like the ad libs, Ty Dolla features, you know, and he does have standalone songs. It just like he's always on a feature. So that's where you always see him at. But come on now. That's another person, too. All right, speaking of music, and we on this topic. All right, Jay Z, the clip goes viral. All right, after after being on uh, Kevin Hart's podcast or Kevin Hart's show. All right, this is recorded back, uh, you know, a while back, but you know, the internet they resurface something. So Jay Z, this clip was him um, just really just telling telling Kevin Hart, just like he was, you know, be at family gatherings, and he would have to tell some of his family members, preferably his cousin, like, no. When he asked for 4800 And then, you know, the clip went viral and everybody states that, oh, yeah, well, he's a billionaire. Dad, you can't really give your cousin, you know, 4800 And I, in my opinion, it's two ways of looking at it. But I feel like I feel like this is this is not a conversation about being selfish. I feel like the conversation is more about en entitlement. Because at the end of the day, yes, this man is a billionaire, but you're not entitled to his money, the hard work that goes into it as well, too. And especially if you're you're asking, in a lot of these situations, people are asking, you know what I'm saying, with, with no business plan in mind, with, oh, yeah, man, I'm a, I'm, man, this is what I got to do, da-da-da. If you come with an actual business plan and, and, and approach, approach me in a certain way, yes, it's my kin, it's my family, but also, you, we don't know how many handouts he gave to his family before he, before he said no. You know what I'm saying? We looking and delving into another person's pockets, and that's what we do in the black community. I'm going to be real with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be real with you. 
the money conversation is always a tough conversation, and especially if you know somebody that's actually giving money, getting money. Like the sense of entitlement to that person's uh, to that person's dollar. Oh yeah, man. I remember when I was a uh, you know what I'm saying. Well, <laughs> I remember when you was in diapers, man. I was changing your diapers. Nah, look. I mean, what what does that have to do with now? You feel me? Like I didn't work hard hard to get to the to this point too. You feel me? And then if you just give out money, it's a sense of entitlement as well too to to a person, and feel like they can just keep coming back and just doing it. So I can understand how that could be. You know what I'm saying? How. Like that that's just a sense of entitlement. And I can I see how people can see it being selfish where well, you're a billionaire, you such a well off, you 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 somewhere else with it, you know what I'm saying? You just can't help out your family. But also we gotta remind ourselves to have context with anything. We're not in these closed rooms. You know what I'm saying? Like he's he's telling us situations where he said no. But you don't know how many times he probably said yes too. You feel me? And like when you get in a certain uh standpoint, it's just like like money and, well, and money and greed, like just just greed alone, like it's dangerous. Like it's one of the most dangerous things. It kills people. You feel me? Like greed is, come on now. Come on now. Like let's call a spade a spade as well too. You feel me? Like if he kept, if Jay-Z keep giving his money, uh, giving his money away to his family, you know, and they're, you know, they're not doing anything to, to deserve that. You feel me? Like, yes, you're my family, but it's a sense of entitlement, too. It's a sense of entitlement, too. So if you come with a business plan, you come and approach me a certain way, then maybe the conversation is different. You feel me? Like, we just looking at a lot of people just looking on the one side like, oh, yeah, you selfish. You you know what I'm saying? Where, like, you can't just give your, your family this type of money, this type of money. And honestly, I feel like that's a capability that a lot of people don't have. The capability to say no. You feel me? Like, just the capability to say no. Like I mean, it's sim as simple as that. Like, and we don't and we don't understand that uh, uh, you saying yes all the time and yes all the time can also hinder and hurt the person that you're saying yes to, because now they now they think like the world is on a silver platter, like where I could just okay, where I can just give money, blow it up. It's no experience in it. It's no consequence in it. You feel me? Like at the end of the day, I feel like you can you can say he you 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 can have your opinion all you want and feel like he's selfish, but I feel like the conversation more is about the entitlement than anything. For real, for real. Like, yeah, of course I can give him the money. You feel me? Of course I have that. But it's the principle and things too as well. I had I had the experience, I had to go through things, I had to work hard and dedicate my life and my time to get to where I'm at. You feel me? So at least if it's going to be on the other side of things, present it in a certain manner. You know what I'm saying? Not just in one of those like, okay, well, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I got this going on. I got this going on. Oh, man, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I used to change your diapers, man. Come on now. You can look out. You feel me? It's not. It's how many more of those are, that, is that going to be? Let's, let's be real. You feel me? Let's be real. I just wanted to talk on that briefly. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like people should start looking at it in another way as well, too. It can be a sense of entitlement as well, too. And enabling a certain behavior to continuously happen. My, that's my take on it. But it was fight weekend. It was fight weekend that just passed. Canelo versus Charlo. I'm very disappointed. Uh, I'll get my recap. But it's going to be brief. It's going to be brief. Because I'm disappointed. You feel me? Like, you have you have the... And, it's, and, honestly, and honestly, it's been a lot of mega fights that's been disappointed this year. Like, the mega fights. Like, Tank and Garcia. Tank Watch Garcia. You know what I'm saying? Watch Garcia up. Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence, that just surprised me because I had Earl. It surprised me. Respect to Earl because he still fought, but that, that was a lopsided victory. Like, I wasn't expecting that. Then you get to Canelo and Charlo. I have high hopes for Charlo, even though you went up 15, 20 pounds in weight class. You know what I'm saying? You got to know who you facing at the end of the day because you can't get in there in the ring and act scared or act as if it's just like, okay, this is just a money grab. This is just my perspective on it. You feel me? Like, you're, you're a master at your craft, too. So, you getting in the ring with a big dog, bro. It's time to step up. You feel me? Like, this is the moment. This is the moment that you dream about, talk about, and you get in there and you're a shell of yourself. Come on, man. And this Canelo. Like, this is, I understand the competition level as well, too. But you're here to this point facing him. So, it's time to show up. It's time to show up, bro. I had Charlo winning just because I wanted. I like to see like I the supposed underdog win, but also I know how talented Charlo is. So it's just like that's why it's just a disappointment. You know what I'm saying? Because Canelo, come on now, he's 59 and 60 now, 60 and two for a reason. 
he only lost to Mayweather and Gigi, Triple G. So it's like, that. that is very true. You know who you're dealing with. You feel me? Know who you're dealing with. And it's like, bro, and, I, and, and where I get upset too is like people spend their hard term, time and money, you know what I'm saying, and invest in this, in this fight, in this event. You know what I'm saying? And you, you got to perform. That's what we're here for. But, you know, like I don't want to sit here and just say it's just, it's, it's politics or anything of that nature. It's no excuse, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I Come on, it's no excuse for that. Like, I don't have much of a recap on that because I'm disappointed in that. That might have been the, the most disappointing fight this year. Like, for real, for real. And then we also had another good fight, Haney and Lomachenko, which I feel like, still feel like Lomachenko won. But, you know, that's neither here or there. Okay, neither here or there. But... Would you rather, guys? All right. Would you rather? You know we here. All right. Would you rather never be able to go to the doctor again or never go back to the dentist? This is a tough question. You got to think about this. All right. Would you rather never be able to go to the doctor again or never go back to the dentist? Like you, you, your teeth. You, you, your teeth are very important. You got like I'm I'm having teeth problem now for real for real, and I I understand that pain, but you gotta get checked up. You gotta go to the doctor. You know what I'm saying? So, like if I can never go back to the dentist, it because I, I keep my teeth clean and keep my teeth straight and good, I would never go back to the dentist because never going back to the doctor, you 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 just never know what happened. You never know. You never know what can happen. You get injured injured. Whatever the case may be, I would I would want to go to the doctor. You feel me like that? Like, <laughs> come on now. And and it's funny because black us, us as black people, let's keep it real. Us as black people, we we dad going don't like to go into the doctor unless we about to die or somebody pregnant or some or it's or it's a crazy <laughs> it's a crazy events going on to where you got to go to the doctor. But if I was nah, I could I could not never go again, be able to go again like. I never go back to the dentist because I don't like you know what I'm saying respect respects and shout out to Dennis because for real for real like that job I, is tedious you have to know so so much you dealing with people's mouths and your freaking to your teeth are connected to your dad on a nervous system so you mess up on something your teeth your whole body shut down but transformer whole body shut down so. Yeah, I would. I would say. Um, yeah, I would say I would ne never go back to the dentist for sure. Ne never be able to go to the dentist, like, cause I, I, you know, what I'm saying I respect what they do, man. But I'd be, I'd be hurt going to the dentist. But if I would never, come on now, I gotta go to the doctor. Come on now, I gotta go to the doctor. You know what I'm saying? I'm liking this TikTok thing. You know what I'm saying? Going live, I'm gonna start going live more, man. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe at the Phase On View Podcast, man. At the Phase On View Podcast, man. Thank you, supporters. I'm continue to grow, elevate, elevate the brand. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really believe that if you can, if you stay consistent, like the sky's the limit. You stay de dedicated, and consistent, and whatever you do. And really don't become complacent and continue to grow and elevate, you'll be good. You'll be good. You know, I've been building building this brand. I've been podcasting for a minute now. But everything is starting to come together at the right time and continue to grow. Like that's that's the most important factor in, in part. You know what I'm saying? We're just staying consistent, persistent, and staying on my path. You feel me? Like, don't give up. At the end of the day, don't give up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a teacher, too. I'm, I do other things. I'm getting my master's. Like, I have a lot of great things going on. So, just continue to push forward as well, too. You know what I'm saying? Just word to the wise. Much love, guys. The Face on View podcast. We out of here. We out of here. Yes, sir.